Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today we're going to talk about the legend of May Eve. May Eve is the start of the pagan festival Beltane, which we all know and love. May Day festival, so jolly, so bright, so lovely. However, May Eve is April the 30th and this is a long-held tradition that is known as the devil's birthday. Although this is the start of the joyfulness that is May, there is plenty of slightly fearful practices happening on this day. The devil was a Christianised version of what we consider as pagans or traditional witches as the old one. Sometimes they were referred to as Somnomnus, the horned god, which wonders where the Christians possibly got their horned devil from. Is it from him? Because the horned one, the old one, old Nick, is now known as the devil by the Christians and they have really maligned this god of the pagans and we are completely away from what the devil was. May Eve, the devil's birthday, is the old one's birthday, the horned god's birthday, the pagan Nick. I don't know if you know the phrases, Nick not new, Nick and knock nandy, those sort of phrases, they come from old Nick. Old Nick is a god, not a devil, not a Christian devil anyway, but that is what he's been turned into. Anyway, so this is all about the devil's birthday. The Germans called it Walpurgisnacht because it is the day when the witches fly. This is a Sabbath day. This is one of the greatest Sabbaths of the year. It's one of my personal favourites. I love May Eve. It is when the Christians said that the witches were abroad and hence we have this huge festival in Germany where it was particularly taken up with vim and vigour about Walpurgisnacht where people dress up as witches like bonfires on the top of hills and reenact what those old witches did. So May Eve begins at dusk when the first torches will be lit upon the hills because this is the beginning of Beltane. This was a fertility festival, obviously. It's also a festival to venerate the spirits of the land. Hence why women might go to the top of the hill to venerate the old one. This is the night of witches' revels. And so what I want to talk to you about is what happened on these nights. Maybe you'd like to join in and do this. Witches in Wales were particularly vilified, I have to say. They were known by their pointed noses, their hanging jawbones, their eyebrows that met in the middle, their claw-like hands and their wry teeth, which meant their teeth were all askew and you know, trying to escape from the mouth in different directions. And this is, of course, where we get the typical witch. It is one of the nights that is known when the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest, the other night being Halloween and the third night being Midsummer. This is the first night of the lighter months where we can really get to grips with the world of spirit. Now, this is presumably why witches chose to have this as a worshipping day for their old one. And why not? It's, you know, perfect for it. If the veil is at its thinnest, then they can speak to their god as much as they can speak to those who are past. In Cornwall there is a stone known as the Riches Rock and this is obviously an initiation rock. Traditionally witches would meet here on the night of May Eve and so this is what we're going to look at, what their initiation ceremony of old might have been. Now, there is no recorded evidence for this. It has only been passed down, gleaned from folk tales, from my mother, from my grandmother, from varying other people on the way. We don't know. Nobody does. According to folklore in Wales, before the witches met on this night, they would anoint their bodies with the salve. And this is, you may have come across, as known as a flying salve, one presumes. The flying salve would help them mount their broomsticks and fly off into the void. However, there is also another aspect to the spell, because they would all wear a special girdle, which is a belt. Some wore belts of snakeskin, some wore belts of moleskin. It depended, I think, on the coven or the group. Now, this sounds to me very much like a purification ceremony. And those of you who know me well will know that I'm quite keen on purification before we all get together to ensure that nothing goes wrong. So this would have been important. 
It was known that they would then choose their carriage, which would be a besom, a broomstick, a whatever, and fly up to the high hills, the high areas where they would commune with the old one. Around these high places, the witches would gather and in a circle start their dance. It was known that in the morning you could tell where a witch had been because the circle would be completely imprinted into the grass, down to the bare earth, and the marks in it would be of that of cloven hoofs. And I don't think that bit's necessarily true, but the circle bit certainly is. Circle magic is incredibly important. It's protective and it's inclusive. You can gather together easily within a circle. It's one of the most natural forms of gathering that people have. Now, at these revels, the witches were known to bring their familiars. And this is where um, I think that people started saying they have dominion over the animals. It's terrible. Well, yes, they probably do as much as I have dominion over my dogs and my cats and my ducks and my whatever. The certain covens had young novitiate witches would take in and care and nurture a toad because this was considered the lowliest of the animals, not because it was a you know wicked being. It wasn't. And that's why witches became associated with toads, because if you could care and love a toad, then you could move on to care and love for higher animals such as cats or dogs or horses or goats or hares. New witches were known by the fact that they were nurturing a toad. I think that's rather sweet, actually. I wouldn't mind nurturing a toad. We've got a lot of natterjack toads here, and they're so cute with their bumpy skin and their big eyes. I love a toad. Probably means that I have never really got over my novitiate of witchesness. So let's go back to our sacred rock in Cornwall. This is obviously an initiation rock. The folklore of the region will tell you that if you go a widdershins, which is anti-clockwise, around this rock nine times, you will learn the secret of witchcraft. Bonfires were eternally sacred in ancient times. They were the source of, you know, your heat, your cooking, your home, your hearth and your rituals. And so bonfires for May Eve were very much a part of the pagan ceremony. It is, of course, these pagans going up and worshipping their gods, which gave rise to all the legends of May Eve, that if you were inside, you needed to bar your doors from the witches. And so people would hang hagstones, which is a natural limestone with a hole in it. They would hang these stones up at their doors because this would prevent the witches from entering. The other thing, of course, that you would do is to get rowan branches and scatter them across your doorways and across your thresholds because rowan keeps the witches away. It's how I taught my children what rowan trees look like. My children, of course, think I'm not saying, so they don't really pay much attention to me. However, they do remember that rowan keeps witches away. So these ceremonial gatherings, normally on the high ground, because high grounds, of course, have the vibe of them. If you've ever climbed a hill and stood on top of it, you know how it feels, that energy that's hitting you. It's to do, most likely, with ley lines. Ley line magic is incredibly complex. However, May Eve is the day that ley line magic really picks up in England. There is a ley line known as the Dragon Line. It starts in the east of England and ends at St Michael's Mount in Cornwall. And as the sun rises on May morn, it hits the Dragon Line. As the sun moves over, the Dragon Line lights up in a direct course. It is a particularly fabulous line, actually, and I would recommend you going to Avebury, for example, on May morn and having a look, because the energy that crackles through the ley line in the dawn on that morning as the sun hits it is magical and you're in it. Woohoo! The hairs on the back of your neck will definitely be prickling up for that. So May Eve is a time for witches. It is the time when they were said to make their vows to the gods for the year. And it is very much a two-way street with pagan gods. You know, you work with them. So the witches would be standing around saying, well, I'll do this if you do this. It was a bargain and barter system. The circles that they create through their revels and their dancing are all to do with calling in the god and 
to celebrate this time of year, you know, witches weren't the most boring people alive. They were quite fun. That's why I like to be one. If you'd like to try this out, why not you do your purification ceremony, go up to the high places at dusk, light your bonfire, and dance around it. Widdishins, which is anti-clockwise, because that's traditional, take with you your familiars, whoever you think is possibly your familiar. And you can make your promises to the old gods as much as they can make them to you. It is something that I have done in my youth. I'm a bit old for it now, but you witchlings, you can certainly have a go. If you don't want to do that, but do want to know a bit more about May Eve, do come and join me on Patreon. Our cover meeting's coming up and I'd love to have you there. Go to patreon.com forward slash Jenny Metherill. All the details will be there for you. Otherwise, let me know what you are going to do on May Eve. And I'll see you next week.